Hey there! Welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for 3DS Max, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust your render settings to achieve the best balance between quality and time when creating still images. To follow along, download our project files from the link in the video description and you can try out everything we're doing on your own time. Now let's get started. We've put together a simple outdoor scene, and you can see, we have some noise in the image with a resolution of only 640 pixel square. This was okay for our initial tests and setting the mood, but now we want a higher quality image. So we'll fine tune the render settings and start by increasing the resolution to 1600 pixels. Next, we're going to check out the image sampler settings. Right now, we're using the default progressive image sampler. We could set a specific time limit for the render, but if it finishes too quickly, the image might turn out noisy. If we want, we could set it to two hours if we have a deadline. If we set it to zero, V-Ray will render until it hits the noise threshold we've set. If we set this to zero as well, together with a time limit of zero, it'll make the render run indefinitely until we stop it. I'm going to set the threshold to 0.005 to get a nice clean image. Now let's take a look at the GI settings. Typically, a combination of brute force and light cache works well, so we don't need to tweak anything here. Sometimes for interior scenes, we might want to increase the light cache subdivisions to calculate smaller light details more accurately. And sometimes, for the final image, we might want to use some render elements. This gives us more control over the render in post-production. The simplest way to set this up is by adding a V-Ray back to beauty render element. Have in mind this might affect the render times we set up in the render settings. Now, we'll want to make sure our image gets saved at the end. We can do this through the frame buffer settings by turning on raw image output, and V-Ray will automatically save an EXR or V-Ray image when the render is complete. But let's keep this turned off for now. We'll start the render. I've sped up the recording, but you can see the actual time it took in the status bar. Just a little over an hour. The wait was worth it, because now we can enjoy the detail and clarity of the render. Once we're happy with the image, we can manually save it from the save icon in the V-Ray frame buffer menu, which lets us save just the beauty image separately, or all the passes as individual images, or pack together in one EXR or V-Ray image file. But what if we don't have an hour to spare? Well, we can use a few tricks to strike a balance between time and quality. I'm going to increase the noise threshold a little, which will make our image a bit grainy. But don't worry, we'll use a V-Ray denoiser element to get rid of the noise in the image. Remember, if there's too much noise, this might result in a loss of detail and clarity when the image is denoised. I'll start the render and speed up the recording again, and let's see how it turns out. As you can see, the denoiser gets to work right after the first passes, but the quality isn't quite there yet. It took 26 minutes, which is less than half the time of our first render, and the result is a nice clean image, and the quality of our image is more than satisfying. Now let's take a look at another mode of the image sampler, known as bucket rendering. Depending on your scene and the level of quality you're aiming for, you might want to increase the subdivisions or decrease the noise threshold, but they're generally best left at the default settings, so we'll reset them by holding the control key and right-clicking the corresponding spinner. These settings are similar to those in progressive mode, but here, each bucket or small rendering rectangle will calculate these exact settings before moving on with the image. I'm going to reduce the size of these rectangles a bit so they can calculate smaller sections of the image more quickly. I'll remove the denoiser as we won't need it with these high settings. And now let's render. You'll see all the buckets start to solve the puzzle. In my case, there are 32 buckets. The number of buckets equals the number of CPU threads or logical cores of the computer. If you get impatient and think this isn't enough, and if you have some extra computers or a dedicated render farm to give us a hand with the calculation, we could use distributed rendering. This will connect all render nodes that have three DS Max and V-Ray spawners started and send the scene with all assets to them, 
so their buckets will help solve the puzzle more quickly. First, we'll see our machine's colorful buckets labeled with our computer name for easy recognition, and then all the other render nodes' buckets will start appearing in sets. We can see each bucket labeled to the machine it belongs to and each one color-coded to its render node. Let's watch them work together. And our image is done in record time, despite the high render settings. Distributed rendering is definitely a nice perk, but what if you only have one machine to render on? You can use our dedicated Chaos Cloud with hundreds of machines. We'll turn off distributed rendering now and click the Chaos Cloud button. A dialog appears with a few settings. The first thing we need to do is analyze the scene. This will highlight any discrepancies or technical issues we might have and prompt us to fix them if needed. Once we get the green light, we can click Submit, and this will send the V-Ray scene package to the cloud for rendering. It will direct us to a page where we can modify the resolution and name of our scene, and we can submit it to the cloud queue. It'll take some time to upload, depending on the file size of the scene and upload speed. And when it's done, we can see the job queued and ready to go. We can check the render settings and submission information again. Almost immediately, a machine will pick it up for rendering, and we'll see the progress bar and the render preview appear in the middle of the page. A great advantage of Chaos Cloud is that we can continue working locally without any performance hit while our image is rendering. There are different machines with different specifications that can pick up the job, so speed may vary, but as you can see, it only took 26 minutes. We can preview the result directly in the browser in full detail, and if you're happy with it, you can download the zip archive with all the passes and masks we've added. We've gone through the most important render settings and a few different ways you can render an image depending on the quality you need and the time you have. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. Feel free to download our project files linked in the video description so you can play around with the scene in your own time. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in our beginner series or take a look at our blog and documentation for more product tips. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if so, please give it a like, share it and subscribe. See you soon!